All right, everyone, welcome to um, what I believe will be the last video in the series, so part nine. Um, I think it's time to wrap things up. Uh, you've, I, hopefully you've done a, a good job of, of giving you an understanding of the anti-analysis, uh, certainly the runtime linking, and and if you want to continue, then you know, you're, you're, I think, in a pretty good position to do that, continue your analysis, that is. Um, of course, if anyone has any requests, please leave them in the comments or send me a message, and maybe we can continue the series. But I think I've had enough. Hopefully, you have as well, but learned a lot along the way. This video, then, we're just going to look at this last function because it's, it's kind of got an interesting technique as well. Um, navigating into here, uh, I, just to help kind of speed things up a little bit, I, you, you've hopefully got a pretty good understanding of a flow here of just, you know, you know renaming variables and, and functions and how to now resolve the function pointers uh, to understand what this block of code is doing. First thing that it does, we have a call to our direct API resolution, so that's going to return a function pointer. And that function pointer is for debug UI remote break-in. Um, now, this can be used in order to attach a debugger. And so essentially what this function is doing is, if, and if you think about this in, in context here, uh, we've had anti-analysis to detach debuggers, and now we're gonna have some anti-analysis to make sure that no, buggers can, no debuggers can attach. And so we need to figure out the additional function calls. The first one is to ZW protect virtual memory. And this is going to take then as the second argument the location of memory to change protections, to change permissions. This is gonna be the size, so 32 bytes. And then these are the permissions itself. And a hex 40, uh, you can look it up, it's for read, write, and execute. Um, you've got some documentation here on uh, NT API undocumented, and you can look at virtual protect, which is just the, you know, sort of the higher level implementation out of kernel 32 to see, uh, let's see here, the. Third argument, new protections, and there actually is a link here to memory protection constants. And if we jump to that link, you'll see hex 40. There you go, page execute read write. That's one of those that you just tend to recognize if you haven't seen it before um, and you continue to do reversing, you certainly will. And, um, and then the last argument really doesn't matter here. So it's changing the protections of that region of memory. Now, this that means that it's pointing to this function, debug UI remote break-in, and um, it's making it uh, writable. That's the main protection that it needs because before that, I didn't look it up, but I would suspect that it's only execute and readable uh, because it's code. It doesn't just doesn't typically need to be writable. Um, once it's done doing that, then it calls the system function 40, which is a, a little bit of a, I don't know, misdirection, but essentially it is RTL encrypt memory. And you'll see here on MSDN, there's actually a little note that says, hey, you can also call system function 40 from ADV API 32. Um, and what's relevant here is the first two arguments. So this is going to be the, the location of memory to point to, and then the size, and then it will encrypt that memory. And so you can see this is a pointer to the beginning of that function. It gets shuffled around just a little bit. Um, and then the first 32 bytes, which aligns with the change in memory permissions. Uh, so it just scrambles, essentially scrambles the beginning of that function so that if it's called, um, it won't operate properly and therefore debuggers can't attach. So we can kind of see this here in our debugger. Um, I've already zipped ahead. And so here's our call. This is going to be that call to um, system function 40 or the call to RTL crypt memory. Um, you'll see that up in the register here just happened to still be a pointer to the function debug UI remote break-in. So I just went ahead and did a right click, follow and dump. That's what you're seeing down here, C70. So there's our first address. So there's the first bits of bytes there. Um, you can also look at the disassembly so we can compare that in just a moment. Um, instead of tracing into this call, well, let's hear, I'm gonna set a breakpoint after. Uh, we can trace in just to see uh, jump to EAX, there it is, system function 40. Um, here's our arguments. So there's the pointer to debug UI remote break-in, and then there's the, the constant value hex 20 or 32 bytes. Let's go back to dump one. I'm gonna just run to hit the break after, and you can see now that disassembly, all of those bytes have been encrypted, so they're scrambled. And let's see, we can look at the disassembly, and as you might expect, it's no longer sensical. So any time a debugger tries to attach now, it won't be able to do that. So there you have it. 
uh, scrambling of debug UI remote break-in. And again, this was the last video of the series. There certainly is a ton more that we could cover in this binary as we can now move into, well, there's, there is still more anti-analysis, uh, but we can also uh, move into figuring out what the binary is doing and how it's actually performing its encryption. Where does it hide its, where does it hide its strings? Um, all sorts of good things, but uh, that's all that I've prepped so far. So if you'd like to see more, please let me know, leave, leave some comments uh, in the video here or reach out to me direct in social media or on Discord. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the series, hope you learned a lot, and I look forward to coming up with something new. Until then, keep exploring.